back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing one of two projects for this week. Yes, today we're uploading a video and we're doing a small project, obviously, because here I am. <laughs> and tomorrow I'm going to be doing another project. I'm mainly doing this because I have a bunch of larger projects that I'm working on and I needed the time to get them all finished for you. So this week is just going to be two smaller projects. So for today we are going to be making a baby squirrel and tomorrow we're going to make some type of plush thing I haven't decided yet. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to work on to make our squirrel is work on sewing the body. So I have my pattern all drawn out and it's basically just the outline of a squirrel. I did want to make sure the tail was like really fluffy and large so it's pretty much the same size as the body. So I've got the body, the tail, and then I've got the belly piece right here. And the belly piece is just the length from the neck all the way down to the butt. And then of course to make the inside parts of the legs you just cut the limbs off of the main pattern. So for the fabric pieces we have a left and a right body, a left and a right tail, and then we have the inside parts of the legs along with the belly piece. So I'm going to start by sewing the tail, so I'm just going to sandwich these two pieces together and go all the way around. I'm going to stop a little bit before I get to the very end of the tail, that way it's easier to flip right side out and stuff. And then for the body, I'm going to take the inside parts of the legs and the legs that are on the main pattern, I'm going to sandwich those together and sew all the way around. We're going to do that to the front and back legs. After all the legs are done, we're going to move on to attaching everything to the belly piece. So we're going to sew the belly piece between these two pieces, connecting everything together. And then the last thing you need to do to this is you're going to flip everything right side out, stuff all the legs and everything, and sew the tail on. Now it looks like a big fuzzy mess, but I'm actually going to take a hair trimmer to this so everything is nice and short and just kind of where you can actually see where the legs and stuff are. Right now it just looks like a furry mess and you can't see any of the work that we did, but I'll fix that. Now because this piece is so small, I'm going to keep the clay work really simple. I'm just going to make a face for this, and I'm also going to be furring the face. So we're mainly just working on making the mouth, the nose, and the little eyes. So for this, I'm going to be using original Sculpey, and I'm going to take a lump of tin foil, and I'm going to completely cover this in clay. I'm going to make sure to do a nice thick layer, that way I have a nice layer to work with, and if I need to add or take away clay, I can. After I have my tin foil covered, I'm going to smooth everything out so it has a nice feel to it, and then I'm going to kind of shape it into the shape of the squirrel's face. After I like the shape of the face, I'm going to move on to adding the eyes. For this, I'm going to push my thumbs into the clay where I want the eyes to go, and then I'm going to put some clay balls in place of that. I'm then going to use some strips of clay to make the eyelids, and I'm going to use my tools to blend everything together and shape it into a proper expression. Also, if you're curious on what I'm sculpting the head on, it's basically just a little candle holder for a tea light and I'm just using the bottom of it. When making my eyes, I'm trying to make the eyelids as small as possible because the squirrel's eyes, I want to be kind of bugged out like a squirrel would have his eyes and they don't really have a very thick eyelid, it's really thin. Now I'm going to move on to doing the mouth and nose. And this is also really simple, basically it's made out of a bunch of little balls of clay. So for the cheeks, I'm going to take two even amounts of clay, I'm going to roll them out into balls, and then I'm going to push them onto the face and then blend them in. For the nose, it's going to be a slightly smaller ball of clay, I'm going to push it on the very top of the snout and I'm going to also blend that in as well. I'm going to use my tools to shape the nostrils and the lips, and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to take my other tools and I'm going to cut down the amount of clay going around the neck. Basically, I'm trying to make an indent so the fabric has a nice place to combine with the clay. So I'm just drawing a circle around the base of the neck, and then I'm going to dig away the rest of the clay that I don't need. That way I'm not using too much clay and the head won't be super heavy. This is also a good way to conserve clay because a lot of the clay does build up at the very bottom and you don't need to use that clay. You can just get rid of it and save it for another project. So once I have my edges all straightened up and I'm happy with how the face looks, I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about 35 minutes. Once my clay is out of the oven and is cooled, I can start on the painting. Now because the rest of the face is going to be covered in clay, I mainly just need to paint the mouth and the eyes. So I'm going to primer them with a nice brown color. This brown's going to be a little bit brighter than the color of the fur, mainly because I wanted to make sure these parts of the face stood out. 
So I'm gonna go over everything, I'm gonna let this dry, and then we can start adding some highlights and lowlights and decorating the eyes. For the eyes, I'm gonna add the highlights to the iris first, and then we're gonna paint on the pupil. I'm mainly doing the pupil last because it's easier to add the details to the eye before you add the black. The black just kind of fixes up the edges, and that way you don't have to touch anything up afterwards. Last little thing I'm gonna add to the eye is just adding a bit of a white highlight to them. That way they look reflective. For doing the mouth, I'm going to add some darker browns to the creases for the mouth and the nostrils. That way this looks like it's darker because it would have a kind of natural shadowing because it kind of goes inwards. And then for the parts that are more lifted, I'm going to brighten those by adding a brighter, more vibrant brown. After all of that's dried, I'm going to add a little bit of detail for where the whiskers would be to the face, and then I'm going to call this done for the painting. I'm going to let this dry. After it's dried, I'm going to apply a layer of resin. Now one thing with this piece, because of how it was, I actually found out that it probably was best to do the resining after adding the fur to the face. But I had already done the resining, so I'll have to fix it later. But basically, I'm going to end up painting over a little bit of this after we add the fur to it. So again, this is going to dry overnight and then we can put everything together. Okay, so it's the next day and we're ready to add the head to the body of the squirrel. So I'm going to be using a combination of E6000 glue and hot glue. The hot glue is just to help hold everything into place while the better glue dries and hardens. E6000 glue is kind of tacky and doesn't like to stick, so it always helps to just kind of have something holding it in place while it's curing. Once you have the head in place, you're going to set this aside for maybe two or three hours just to dry a little bit. You don't need it completely dry to work with. Again, you just need to make sure that the glue isn't sticky so that your head stays in place while you're adding the fur to it. Now before we add the fur to the face, I am going to take my hair trimmers and I'm going to trim up the fur of the body. That way it's just not a scraggly mess and we can see what we're doing a lot better. So I'm just going to shave the squirrel real quick and then we can move on to finishing the face. Okay, I'm done shaving the squirrel and now we're going to move on to adding the ears to the face and furring the rest of the face. So for the ears, the inside part is just a little bit of felt and I'm going to glue this to the backing of the fur fabric that we used for the body. So I just have a little piece of fur fabric here and I'm going to glue it into place. Once the glue has dried, we're going to cut our ears out and then we're going to add them to the face. Okay, now to fur the face, we're going to cut little pieces of fur fabric to fit different spots of the face, and we're going to use a combination, again, of E6000 and hot glue. We're going to use the E6000 around the edges of the fabric, and then we're just going to put a dot of hot glue in the middle of it to help hold it into place while it dries. So I'm going to do this to all the rest of the face. We're going to let that dry, and then we can shave it down, and we can add some extra details and touch-ups to it later. At this point, after adding all the fur to the face, I realized my squirrel looks more like a guinea pig. I, I think that's adorable and it makes me want to make a guinea pig, but we do need to fix that. So again, when this is all dry, we're going to shave down the face as well. Okay, so our squirrel is freshly shaven and we can move on to adding a little bit more detail around the eyes. So I'm just going to kind of touch up the fur around his eyes and his mouth, just kind of painting it here and there and touching up the bits of clay that are exposed and we might have to re-resin these after we paint them as well. So again, I'm just touching everything up so it looks really nice and it's nice and flush and you don't really see too much of a seam between clay and fabric. a baby squirrel. I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop, so make sure to check the links down below if you want to buy anything. Also, don't forget tomorrow we're going to have another video uploaded, so keep an eye out for that. My upload time is usually between noon and one, so unless something horrible happens, I should have a video up around that time. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!